I am actually going to be developing the code for the demos on my PC using WebStorm, which I used in the Arduino demos as well, and will then be copying the source code over to my Pi using a tool called WinSCP. Now these tools are not necessary, as you can write the code directly on your Pi using a text editor there, or you can use a different text editor on your PC as well, and copy the source code over however you wish. Alright, so the first thing I need to do is create a new JavaScript file, which I will call rpy-led. And now I will just copy the content of the Arduino demo file, and then paste it into the new file here. Now the code to operate an LED on a Raspberry Pi is pretty much the same as it is with an Arduino, except for a couple of tweaks. The first thing I need to add is the Raspi I.O. plugin that I installed in the first lesson of this section, so I will just require it at the top, just like I did with Johnny5, and will assign it to a variable called Raspio, or Raspio, or Raspio, however you want to say it. Anyway, now that just simply loads in the new module, so in order to put it to use, I will need to assign a new instance of it to the I.O. property on the board object. If you recall from the Arduino demos, I mentioned that the board class automatically searches for an Arduino attached to any of the available COM ports. With the I.O. property, I'm basically telling the board object, hey, don't go searching for an Arduino, as I want you to use the plugin for a different platform that I've specified here instead. In order to do that, I can inject an object literal into the board's constructor with an I.O. property on it. And then I can assign a new instance of Raspi I.O. to it. And that should do it. Now at this point, Johnny5 will route all GPIO output commands to the Raspberry Pi's pins instead of trying to feed them over to an attached Arduino, which isn't there in this case. One other thing I need to do is to change the pin number for the LED. This is fed to the Raspi I.O. plugin, which accepts three different pin naming schemes. The first naming convention you can use is specify the function name of the pin, which can be found on the pinout diagrams I mentioned in the last lesson, by specifying a string containing the function, which is GPIO in this case, plus its corresponding number. So for example, in my particular case, I want to use the GPIO function, and I am using physical pin number 12, which has a GPIO number of 18, so I would pass in the string of GPIO 18. You can find the GPIO names and numbers in the wikidocs for the Raspi I.O. package on GitHub if you want to go this route. Just scroll down until you find the chart corresponding to your Pi's version, which for me is the final chart on the page. Now here you can see that physical pin number 12 has a GPIO number of 18, which is what I passed into the LED constructor as the pin name. Since the pin also supports PWM functionality, the docs state that I should be able to refer to the pin by its PWM name if I wanted to, which is PWM0 for pin number 12. However, I have found that this convention doesn't work perfectly, so I would recommend against this. The reason is, if you look at the chart here, you'll see that PWM0 is used on two different pins. By plugging in PWM0 as the pin number in my code, Raspi IO actually uses physical pin number 32 instead of pin number 12. This appears to be the case with PWM1 as well, so I would just avoid going that route, especially since there are other ways to identify the pins. I also want to point out that there are discrepancies in the GPIO names on this chart in the Pi4j chart I showed you earlier, so just keep that in mind if you try to use the names on the other chart. The Pi4j GPIO names are valid, but they correspond to a different GPIO numbering scheme, which I will talk about next. Being that the Raspi IO code uses the names on this wiki page, I would use these if you're going to use the GPIO scheme. Otherwise, you may end up trying to control the wrong pin, which could result in unintended behavior or errors. Now, another way to specify pin numbers is to use the wiring pi virtual pin numbers by just simply passing in an integer. This is similar to the GPIO number in the sense that it does not necessarily correlate to the physical pin number. You can also find the numbering for this convention in the same Raspi IO wiki docs under the wiring pi pin column. Another resource you can use is the wiring pi website which lists the numbers in the outer columns. Now as you can see, this numbering scheme isn't super straightforward either, unless you're already familiar with it, so I don't like to use this one either, but if this one works for you, then roll with it. I actually prefer the final naming convention that Raspi IO supports, which corresponds to the physical pin numbers. The name you pass in is a letter P, followed by the header number, then a dash, and then the physical pin number. Now depending on the version of your Pi, you may actually have multiple headers. Now in code, the main header, which is what I have my jumpers attached to, and it's the biggest one, is referred to as the P1 header. Now if you have another header, it is more than likely referred to as the P5 header. This information is in the wikidocs as well if you need it. You can see the header name above the charts, and then the full physical pin name in the outer columns. So again, you have header name, dash, and then the physical pin name. With this convention, you have less to remember and don't have to worry about looking up the appropriate names for the other conventions. 
Now there certainly are benefits to using the other conventions, as they can provide consistency across the different Raspberry Pi versions. But since I prefer the final option, I will just plug in a string of P1-12 for the pin to which my LED is tied. From here, you write the code the exact same way as you do with an Arduino, so I can just leave the rest intact and fire up the application. But first, I need to copy my demo file over to my Pi, which I'll do using WinSCP. Alright, and then I'll navigate to the demos directory on my PC, and copy the rpi-led.js file over to the demos directory on my Pi. Sweet. Now I can close this out, and then go back to my terminal and run the application with Node. And I'll load up the camera window again so that you can see the LED in action. Now since I didn't modify the LED code, aside from changing the pin number of course, the LED object was left hooked into the REPL, so I can just run the exact same commands I did with the Arduino demos. So for starters, I can say redLED.on, and it turns on, redLED off, okay, redLED.pulse, and then I'll give it a time of 500 milliseconds, nice. And then finally, redLED.stop.off. Awesome. Now of course we barely scratched the surface of what Johnny5 can do here, so I certainly encourage you to dig into the framework more on your own, or, as usual, if you see I have other Johnny5 courses available on this site, I encourage you to check those out as well. Thanks for watching.